Hey, welcome to episode six of uh, The Journey of Grace. I'm so glad you could join us, and I pray that God is speaking to your life in supernatural ways, not just through podcasts like this, but other things day by day. Oh, and also give God praise and, his, and glory for all that he's done and all that he is doing uh, in my life and also in your life. And I'll give you an update on me, but most of all, I want to give it a talk about God's grace through difficult seasons in your life. So whatever journey you're going through, it is a journey of grace. It's one that he knows. It's one he cares about. It's one that he's walking with us through. And it's really a great joy, honestly, to be here um, with you just two weeks away from major surgery. So two weeks ago today, at this minute, I was in major surgery and, and God has been so faithful. I'll talk about that. Even in that surgery, some things took place that I didn't know about till later, but God's hand was on us because uh, people like you were praying and we thank God for that. But again, this journey is not about my, my heart, it's about us together and God's grace over us. Several people have commented to me via text or email. If you have any thoughts, please go to podcast at cag.org, podcast at cag.org, and let me know if this is encouraging to you or not. But several people have responded to us and said, man, this is what I need at that right time. And it, whether you're in the middle of it or past that difficult season right now or going into a difficult season, his grace is sufficient. We thank God for that. So, so grateful that we be with you today on episode six. Please share this uh, with that whatever, whoever might uh, be in your purview uh, on whatever platforms you have to as well. And we ask God for grace with it. But what a great joy to, to see you all. For those who are here in this country, for those who are around the world, God bless you guys. And so thankful that we can do this journey of grace together for his glory. So today, episode six, I want to be really transparent as I've tried to be throughout all these episodes. Uh, when we first started this uh, journey several months ago, uh, we thought that we would be very open with people and say, here's what we're going through. So I'm be very transparent about a difficult uh, night I had not too long ago, a difficult moment uh, through this journey. And uh, we're talking about today the word, worship, and warfare. The word, worship, and warfare. And so uh, through this process, people have been praying I have been blessed by God's grace, and uh, when we got that diagnosis back a few months ago, so well, several months ago now, and then walked through chemo, and then facing surgery, really no fear through that, no, no fear through that whole thing. I felt like God was like really lifting us up, and I felt the prayers of people I talked about in a, in a previous podcast that I could actually feel the prayers of people, and I felt that even going into surgery this past uh, uh, two weeks ago today. And um, it was just awesome. I didn't feel fearful. I felt the peace of God. I know many people were praying. And again, I, I've said this before publicly, but if I could thank every person who's prayed one time for me, I would be eternally grateful for you and just to say thank you right now. And I'm so grateful. And uh, I'm going to encourage you not to stop. We're still a couple more steps in this journey that I'll talk about here at the end of this podcast. But God has been so faithful and uh, it's amazing when we started this episode one, we didn't know all the things that transpired by God is so faithful. So what's so cool about the Lord and about his word is that he speaks to us. And I want to talk about that and then give you an update sort of on what took place two weeks ago today and then uh, talk about worship and warfare. Is that okay? So the word, worship, and warfare. And uh, we, uh, on the 15th, uh, four days after surgery, I had a really tough night. Uh, you know, I'm recovering from major surgery. I was sore. I was in pain, uh, all that kind of stuff. I try not to bother. DD has been amazing. My wife has been amazing through this whole process. And it's probably more stressful on her than it is on, on me in many ways. And uh, really only t two times have I had, had difficult, really difficult moments, sort of like moments that I was felt overwhelmed. And I, I thank God for that. But one of those was four days after uh, the surgery. And uh, during that time, I was, it was during the middle of the night, couldn't sleep well, and still recovering, and still had some apparatus connected to me and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just just feeling overwhelmed, asking, God, would you please help me? And sort of, you know, how your mind wanders, how your mind goes back to the journey, uh, how it started, what's going on, and then you, then you let the enemy sort of creep in for a moment. And it's so important that you let the Word of God speak uh, in a powerful way 
to your life. And so um, then that during the middle of the night, God just start, started dropping scriptures into my into my thoughts, and I begin to to say them out loud. Um, it's the middle of the time of the evening. It's it's late. It's probably two o'clock in the morning. And I just felt this overwhelmingness, and uh, I felt the Lord said, let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O God. And I have to be transparent with you. I knew that for those few moments, my thoughts were not pleasing to God because it was not fear had settled in, but it's overwhelming. I've never been afraid through this whole process because I know who holds me. I know where I'm going. I know who's holding you and where you're going. But I just felt overwhelmed. I just felt like, God, this is a lot right now. And I just felt, Lord, God, forgive me for not letting the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be pleasing in your sight. And then the Word of God, so powerful. It's interesting in our study in Ephesians, if you study Ephesians 6, we talk about the sword of the Spirit, right? The sword of the Spirit is not just to have that you pull out on Sunday or you open in your Bible once in a while, but the sword of the Spirit is this powerful, offensive tool against the attacks of the enemy. And that night was an attack of the enemy. I felt really strongly that the enemy was trying to attack, to discourage, to dissuade. And uh, I just felt like the Lord was saying, fix your eyes upon Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. And then the, the scripture out of Psalm 61, this is such a great psalm. Uh, you know, David writes a psalm, and he says, Lord, hear my cry, O Lord. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call out to you. When my heart is overwhelmed and weak, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And I, I felt like that scripture verse that I'd read several times before, of course, it just came back to me, Lord God, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Let my heart not be overwhelmed by what I see. Let it be overwhelmed by who you are. And I just felt that was an important thing for us to understand. And so uh, I like the rest of Psalm 61 says, you've been a shelter to me, a strong tower against the enemy. And it was really cool that night, in the middle of the night, the word of God just began to speak like life and power to me. This is why you know, Psalm 119 says, hide the word of God in your heart. I don't care how long you've known Christ, or if you're a minister or a global worker, you need the word of God to be prevalent in your life, not just for what you give out, but what goes in. And so all these scriptures are just pouring over me. And uh, Ephesians chapter 3, now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or think, uh, that because of his power that's working in us, that verse came to me that night. All these verses just rolling in my thoughts, and I'm saying them out loud over and over again. Now to him who is able, now to him who is able, and I'm speaking life to myself by speaking the word of God to myself. And I just feel like for whatever journey you're going through and whatever part of the process you may be in, I want to encourage you to let the word of God speak life to you. You know, we think about the verses, it's, lamp, it's a light unto my feet, a lamp to my path, uh, that God wants to let us hide his word in our heart, not just for sin, that outward sin, but that we don't start doubting God. And just on those nights that you feel overwhelmed, or those days you feel overwhelmed, let the word of God dwell in you richly, Paul says, right? Just let it be growing in you, okay? And then I like so much that in Psalm 42, uh, the psalmist says this, why so downcast, O my soul? Put your hope and your trust in God. Why are you so disturbed? For I will yet praise my God and my Savior. My soul is downcast within me, and I remember from the land of Jordan. And again, you sort of remember how things used to be. And then verse 7, 7, deep calls to deep. In the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. And so verse 7 talks about a lot of things to me, but I, I think about the depth of my own heart being overwhelmed to the depth of God's heart overwhelming me with his grace and then verse number eight I hope you hold on to this too and this is another verse came to you that night by day the Lord directs his love and at night his song is with me a prayer to the God of my life Psalm 42 8 by day the, the, the Lord directs his love and at night his song is with me a prayer to God the God of my life. I don't know why it's sometimes so hard at nighttime, and especially when you're not sleeping well or if you're up at night, you know, the enemy can, can just overwhelm you. Again, not to doubt, not to turn from God at all, but in all transparency, and I think we should be transparent, don't you think so? We want to be authentic in our, in our love for God. 
But God in his grace has used those things over and over again. He says, listen, a song in the night God will give you. And that night, the word started, and then I began to sing some songs of praise to God that I'll talk about in a second, okay? So I just I felt like really strong in the word, worship, and warfare, because that night I was in warfare. The enemy was just really attacking to make me not doubt God, but doubt future, doubt things, uh, being overwhelmed by stuff. And I just felt like God wanted to speak this to your life, like he spoke to that, my, my life just, what, 10 days ago, that he is the God that, who gives you a song in the night. And uh, I, I love that so much, um, that song that says, in the night season and all the day long, that God gives us something fresh in our life. And so what's the prayer uh, to God of your life? What's the prayer, Lord? Let my heart be focused on you. Let the word of God dwell in me so strong that in those difficult times, it's the word that is the enemy's uh, fear, that we come against the enemy, not with my f- strength, because I don't have anything. My strength and my help comes to the Lord, right? So I want to tell you real quickly, if I can, uh, and then we'll talk about worship that same night, too. So on two weeks ago, when I had the surgery, two weeks ago today, um, you know, the plan with the surgery was about three and a half, maybe three to three and a half, four hours maximum, right? So the doctor came in beforehand. It's going to be straightforward. Here's what we're going to do, and here's what's going to happen. And it's all done robotically, which is interesting, too. So uh, I have some thoughts on that for a future podcast, too, as well. But he said, oh, we have no problem at all. So, you know, I went in early morning. It's like uh, 7.15 or something like that. The surgery is starting like 15 minutes later. I was there at five, like 5 o'clock in the morning and had a chance to encourage the person who was checking me in and actually prayed with them about 5.30 just to pray with them about some of the things going on in their life. I'm just trying to always, and I want to help you with this too, focus on what God's doing, not necessarily your situation. The problem is the enemy always wants you to get focused on your situation, and by doing that, you forget the greatness of God. So at 5.30 in the morning, I'm checking in to have this major surgery, and God in his grace said, hey, listen, speak to this person. So she checked me out. I said, can I pray with you? She said, please do. So we prayed together. She'll show up at Cornerstone sometime very soon, she said. So please say hi to her when she does, okay? So going to surgery, surgery starts at 7.30, and of course, then I'm I'm out, right? So... uh, all under uh, anesthesia, and uh, for some time, and I wake up about 1.15. So it's supposed to be like three and a half, four hours, maybe a couple hours. I said, okay, it's not too bad. So the doctor came by, saw me, and uh, said, hey, things went real well. Uh, we, everything's good in that regard as far as the surgery part. And uh, so then for some time, I couldn't see D. I was still recovering. They were worried about a couple of things. And so I didn't see D like till like 5.30 that night. So if all this time she's not hearing, all this stuff's happening. And I was sort of in and out, just recovering. But the next day in the hospital room, the doctor came and talked to us. A surgeon came and talked to us and said, listen, I want you to, he was holding some pictures in his hands. And I, I'd seen the pictures the day before, just sort of groggy, in a groggy way, these pictures. And they were inside of me. And he said, I usually don't take pictures of my surgeries, but I'm, I'm going to show uh, some students at a teaching hospital that I teach at just what took place here. And so what had happened, the surgery is supposed to take like three hours or three and a half hours, ended up taking like a lot much longer time, an hour and a half or an hour, at least an hour longer, because um, there's something, there's a, a vein, an artery called the vena cava, and all the medical people who hear this would understand that, but it's a major vein in the lower part of your body that goes into your heart and feeds all the lower part of your body. It's, they said, he said it's the size of a garden hose. And the, the walls of the vena cava are paper thin. And so because it's one of the largest uh, arteries in your body, they said if you, if you nick that artery, uh, the chances of you recovering from that in a surgery like that are, are very slim. So again, I went into surgery for one thing, but when they got in there, they realized that uh, some of the chemo treatments had actually adhered some of the tissue to the vena cava that had to be removed, that some of the tissue that had to be removed. And so they had to scrape off that. What usually would take 10 minutes took over an hour to scrape that off because every moment they're just concerned what happens at that second if we, if we nick this paper-thin artery. And I didn't know that till two days to the day later. But I, I want to tell you something. God is working, guys. Even when we don't see it, he's faithful. And so you guys were praying for me. You were 
trusting God with me that God would, would move in a powerful way. And uh, the surgery part was great, but then that part was unseen by us or by the surgeon, but not unseen by God. And I feel at that moment, like we prayed over and over again, that many of you guys were praying, God, give wisdom to the surgeon, give insight to the surgeon. And so he showed those pictures. So he said, I'm going to show this because this very rarely happens, but what we had to do to make it, to make it safe. And so I just want to thank God that he never stops working when, even when I don't know it. And so I hope that's a, an enjoyment and encouragement to you because in your own life, we think, okay, God, I, if I know it, then I know it's happening. If you only know what God's doing, that's very limited. God is doing so much more and so much greater, not just in my life and not just in your life, but in the world far more than we know. He's the God of the impossible. He's the God of the supernatural. And so I thank God for his word. I thank God for that day, especially not knowing that the vena cava would come into play at all. But God's hands was on the surgeon and God was guarding and guiding. I'm here today to testify of his greatness and his power. And I hope somebody who's listening to this podcast will say, thank God, thank God, thank God. So uh, just amazing stuff that, you know, the miracles of God are miracles we see and miracles we don't see. And I believe when we get to heaven, we're going to uh, celebrate a lot of things we did not see. So I'm going to talk for a second then too about that same night four days after surgery, and the word became to come to me very strongly, and it was really powerful. And then um, I began to have that one word says, hey, listen, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And uh, right away I was thinking about the power of worship and warfare. So let me just give you a quick, brief lesson on worship. Worship is not just singing songs that are popular. Worship is not just the latest Elevation song or the latest thing from Bethel or Hillsong or wherever you like. That's not worship. Worship is focusing on the Lord. Whatever it might be, now you can do worship God by doing that, but if you're singing because you like the music, that's one thing. If you're singing and worshiping or lifting your hands with no song or in the middle of the night like that night, I was worshiping God with no one no instruments, there's no one else just worshiping God and singing out loud to God. I just felt like God in his grace wants you to understand that worship, first and foremost, is focusing on the Lord. And when you focus on God, then all of a sudden things are changed and shifted. So that night, the word began to focus me, and then worship shifted me. And so that night of warfare that I felt overwhelmed, and I, I know many of you guys are going through that right now. I hope that you, in the night season or a difficult moment, you might remember this, that God wants you to focus in on him and let the worship be the focal point to say, God, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. I'm not sure what's happening, but I'm focusing on you. And so worship can be speaking life. It can be singing songs, no question about that. But if the songs don't become the act of worship, then they're just stuff. They're just sounding gongs and tinkling cymbals, right? So I think God in his grace and his word and his power was speaking to me that night, wants to speak to you about the power of worship in all seasons of your life. Yes, we've got great creative arts team here. You probably have incredible things on your playlist and Spotify list. You're listening to all that stuff. But unless you engage in it, you miss the power of worship. Because worship is not about something that I do. It's something that I, I offer. It's really important. I offer worship and honor to him. So in the Old Testament, the New Testament, we'll talk about really quickly in the next like five minutes if I can. I want to talk about a couple things, how, how worship is warfare. So the enemy constantly is working against us. Whether you know it or not, he's constantly working. And in my case, that night, it was like to be overwhelmed. He knew he could get me with fear, but he could get me with like, uh, just even overwhelmed, like this is a lot, right? And I feel like the enemy knows where you may be weak, but that's where God says, listen, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he'll raise up a standard against the enemy. So can I say this to you? When I worship God, I understand and I recognize that the, fo the source of my life is him, the focus of my life is him, the focus of my hope is him, the focus of my help is him, the focus of my strength is him. So worship is like honing in. So I hope that you get lost 
in worship, not just when the songs are said, but when your mouth is being used by God as an instrument of praise to God. So real quickly, this is now Second Chronicles chapter 20. I encourage you to read this. King Jehoshaphat, you know the story. And Jehoshaphat is the uh, leader of Israel, and he has now heard reports that all these armies are coming against him. And so he stands with the people and prays a prayer. It's like our president standing up and saying, listen, on this day, we're all praying. We're not talking about stuff. No more new stuff. We're just praying. That would be so cool, wouldn't it? So the, the king of this country, Israel, stands up and says, oh, God, you know what's happening. We have no idea what's going to take place. We have no idea what's going to take place from here on in. And uh, he prays and he seeks the face of God. And then a prophet speaks. And I'm going to read it to you. Too. This is uh, chapter 20, verse 15. A prophet comes up and he says, Listen, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed, dismayed at this great horde and this great army. The battle is not yours, it's God's. Tomorrow, go down and behold, they will come up and you will find them at the end of this valley, a certain valley. And then he says later on that same chapter, you don't have to fight this at all. This is God's battle. But then uh, what's so cool is that the, the people of Judah then are encouraged and they're affirmed and they begin to go. They, all, the arm, the, all the warfare is ready to go. All the army is ready to go. But Jehoshaphat sends out worshipers ahead of the battle. Now, we don't know if they could fight physically, but they could fight spiritually. And uh, on the way... Jehoshaphat says, listen, I want all of you to say this, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. And they said that and they're shouting it and they're chanting that. You know, they're just over and over again, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. How cool is this that the king prays, bows his head and worship God. The next morning they get up and they, on the way to the battle, they're saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love, steadfast love endures forever. Can I say this to you? His steadfast love endures for you forever. So give thanks to him. And when, when you really do worship God, it does push back the enemy. It confuses the enemy. Because how many times have you let the enemy or I've let the enemy take captive my thoughts? When I worship God and I focus on him, I get lost in how great he is. And I lose sight about what things might take place by the enemy's work. So they went out, they are singing these songs, they're praising God. And when they come to the place that uh, they are ready to fight this battle, they look down, all they see is dead bodies from the, the army of the enemy. The, uh, the enemy had actually fought against itself. So there's not one word that any person from the army of Judah had to fight at all except spiritually by worship. Interesting thought, right? Pretty powerful thought. And so I want to ask you in your own life, I'm not asking you what playlist you like. I want to make sure that when you worship God, you're focused in on him. And through this journey of grace for me, not only here on that night four days after surgery, but before that and since that, I just want to say, Lord, I thank you. I know you're in charge. I know that, Lord oh God, you're the source of my life. And I give you praise for who you are. I praise you, Lord God, for watching over me. It's a miracle that I'm sitting here with you today. And I really hold on to that. That's a miracle. But you're a miracle of God's grace too, so focus in on him. So I like the fact that when they go, all they see are dead bodies. And for three days... For three days, it takes the army three days to, to gather up all the plunder that all these massive armies have brought in for three days. So they're getting the food, they're getting resources, they're getting supplies. It takes them three days just to gather the stuff. That's how big these armies were. And uh, interesting now, from that point on, they don't call that the Valley of Battle, but the, uh, they're giving a Hebrew word there. They call it the Valley of Blessing. The Valley of Blessing. It was supposed to be a terrible battle, right? Judah was concerned, Jehoshaphat was so concerned that he called all the nation to fast and to pray. And, but then to worship, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. It just 
just the right thing to say, right? I'm focusing and honing in on what God does and what he wants to do. So what's so cool about this is this. God does great things. And on the way back to Jerusalem, they're just worshiping God. And they get back to Jerusalem for two days. They just worship God. They thank God for who he is. So when I truly worship, when you truly worship, we take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. This is important. When you're worshiping God, truly worshiping, not just singing, not just going through emotions, but truly worshiping, we're taking those thoughts captive. And I surrender all those thoughts to the greatness and the obedience of my God. So when you're truly worshiping, we take all those thought captive. When we can't worship, we can't worship and be tempted at the same time. In other words, when you're worshiping God, you're focusing on him, you're not going to be tempted. I really believe that. You can't worship God and pray and seek the face of God and be tempted at the same time. Not that temptation won't come, but you won't yield yourself to that temptation. And then also talks about the fact that God in that time, when you worship God, you're focusing on him so much, it changes the perspective on your life and on your heart. And uh, just for a moment, I want you to think about this too, that when the Bible says, take every thought captive, well, how do I do that? Lord, it's so difficult because all those thoughts were wandering that night. But God said, listen, let the word, let worship be warfare against the enemy's work and traps of the enemy. So it worked for the nation of Judah. And it also worked for Paul and Silas in the middle of a, a difficult time in their own life. They were in stocks in a prison in Philippi. And they began to worship God. They weren't focused on the pain of the sores on their back from the whipping. They weren't worshipped on what was going on. They weren't, worshiped, they weren't focused on the, the stench in that dungeon. They were focused on the greatness of God. So I want to say this to you. There are still a couple steps I have to take uh, in the days to come in this journey of grace that I'll talk to you about in the days to come. You know, talking to more doctors about how do we prevent this from coming back and what treatments might be uh, asked for going forward. So I'll let you know about that when I know about that. But I'm focused in on God. And just being transparent with you, that one night was a difficult night, but God is so faithful. And the rest of these now last six months have been God's grace and his mercy in a powerful way. So I ask you to continue to pray and ask God for complete uh, restoration and healing, that not only that surgery would heal up, but everything else that I'd never have to face this again. If you'd pray with me about that, I would be eternally grateful. And I pray that the cancer never returns, that there's no other issues anywhere else in my body. But no matter what, I praise God. And I thank God for his faithfulness because his steadfast fast love endures forever. For my life and your life too as well. So are you struggling in your spiritual walk? Do you feel overwhelmed by the enemy's traps and his lies? Praise God. Let the word of God be this force, this power. Let the worship of God be a focal point to drive out the enemy. And I just love the fact that in Paul and Silas's case, when they were worshiping God, it said that it was so powerful that God responded to their worship and the chains fell off, all the prison cells were open, and they were set free. And I think many of you need to be set free by truly worshiping and focusing on God and letting him speak to our heart through his word, through his worship. So we do spiritual warfare. Everything is spiritual, right? And we're not battling against flesh and bloods or even moments in my life or your life. We're battling against the enemy's work and his thoughts and his actions. And so I'm asking God in grace to speak this to your life, wherever you're at in this country or around the world. What are you focused in on? Are you letting the word of God speak to you life and letting worship be the focus to say, God, great is your name. No one's like you, Lord God. Your steadfast love, your beauty is so awesome. You are holy. You are powerful. You are capable. You are able. You are strong. Nothing stands in your way. So let's never underestimate the greatness of our God. So I'm going to pray in a moment, but again, I just pray that God's grace over your life would just be real and rich and that you would sense his presence. Thanks for praying for me. Thanks for continuing to pray. I am eternally grateful, but we still need more prayer, right? So I will let you know what happens in the days to come. But uh, we thank God for his grace. Let me pray for you. Lord, I know this is our journey together. You put this on our hearts months ago to do this, not just for me, but for us together. 
Thank you, Lord God, that you are faithful. Thank you that you've given us all we need for life and godliness. Thank you for the word of God that speaks to us in night seasons about focusing on God, about the strength of God, that there's nothing too hard for God. And we stand that our soul is not going to be downcast. We're going to put our hope in God. And I pray this over my friends and family, Lord God, and people I have never met before, that you'd speak to this their life right now. And I thank you, Lord God, for the power of genuine, real worship. My heart, my life, my hands, my words worship in you. Yes, songs of worship. And I thank you, Lord God, that you give us songs of worship in the night season when we need it most. And especially, Lord God, I pray that our worship would now take on a whole other dimension. Not that it feels good to me, but we use it as warfare against the enemy. Let it be genuine to our hearts, Lord God, in my life and everyone here joining me. Let worship take on a whole other uh, area in my life, a whole other level of intensity that we worship and pray and seek the face of God and drive out and confuse the enemy. Let that place of battle now become a place of blessing for everyone here. In Jesus' name I pray it. Amen. Well, listen, again, thanks for joining us on episode 6 of The Journey of Grace. If you enjoy this, please let us know at podcast at cag.org. If you like it, we'll continue. If not, we'll wrap it up here soon. But I do want to let you know about future things in my own life too as well. But more than that, let God's grace speak to you. And may his word and the worship to our king be warfare against the enemy like you've never known before. Let it be new to you. So thanks for sharing this. Thanks for praying. Thanks for loving Jesus. And may all of you sense his presence in new and greater ways because he's worthy of praise and he is worship. He is not only, only worthy of worship, but that worship is powerful in your life in a supernatural way to combat and counteract all the enemy's work. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you guys so much, the more than we can tell you. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. Walk in his strength.